how was a woman received in, in those days? And I think actually Carol, um, they were most surprised because Carol was the music end. They always expect the woman to be the lyric end. So I lived up to that. I, I just never thought of, you know, was I facing any doors that weren't opening because I was a woman. Every door opened. The stereotype that women can't really get into a groove on a piano. And then they heard Carole King and they knew women could. On Broadway came about um, when Barry and I wrote this song together. And I was always fixated on Broadway. I had wanted to write for Broadway. I had always pictured myself doing something on Broadway. And so I wrote a song about a girl who lived in a small town and wanted to come to Broadway. And Barry and I wrote this together. And then we um, actually gave it to the Cookies, who were a group that Carol and Jerry were recording. And then we gave it to the Crystals. And those song records never came out. Then we heard that Mike uh, Stoller and Jerry Lieber were cutting the Drifters. And we went up and played the song for them, even though it was from a female point of view. And they said, we love it, but it has to be rewritten from a male point of view. You can go home and do that, or you can write it with us. And they were our idols. It was just a thrill to be able to work with them. So we said, well, we write it with you. Oh, we originally wrote, we got to get out of this place for the Righteous Brothers. And um, we cut a demo that was very Righteous Brothers-ish. And then the demo was so good that Barry was going to put it out as a record. And uh, George Goldner on Redbird Records loved it. And they were pressing it and ready to go when we found out that the animals had gotten a hold of it and had recorded it. So um, the record was, in a sense, something to be joyous about, but it was something that I was very upset about because I loved my husband's record and I knew how much he wanted it to come out. So. Um, we were very conflicted about we got to get out of this place, but we were very honored when it became this Vietnam anthem. And when we were in New York, we were doing a show off Broadway um, based on all our hits. And um, a, a woman who had been a nurse in Vietnam sent us a letter about how much the song had meant to everybody and how every year they all get together and they sing that song. And we were really moved by that. It's, it's rare that you, as a songwriter, you find out how, how much your songs meant to somebody. And the Cynthia Well, who put words to that loving feeling, dies at the age of 82. Cynthia Well, who with her writing partner and husband, Ballyman, formed one of the most potent songwriting teams of the 1960s and beyond, churning out and dueling hits like The Drifters on Broadway and The Righteous Brothers. You've lost that loving feeling. Signature tunes of the baby boomer era died on Thursday at her home in Beverly Hills. Her death was confirmed on Friday by her daughter, Jane Mann, who did not specify a cause. We lost the beautiful, brilliant, request Cynthia Wellman, the chart-topping singer and songwriter Kalol King wrote in a statement posted on social media, recounting the friendship and rivalry that she and her former husband and songwriting partner Gailey Goffin shared with Mrs. Well and Mr. Mann. Mrs. King added, the four of us were close, caring friends, despite our fierce competition to write the next hit for an artist with a number one song. Mrs. Mrs. Well and Mr. Mann, who were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2010, notched their first hit, Bless You, recorded by Tony Orlando in 1961, two years after the music supposedly died with the aura with the raw air crash that claimed the lives of buddy holly richie valens and jp richardson known as the big bumper thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe Peace.